Okay, I'm already getting sick of it. It's been two days now. I'm already completely, I'm already completely sick of watching Fox News and commenting it. I mean, it's just, it just goes around in circles saying the same crap. Um, but I think, I'm looking, now I'm looking at this horrible thing called Sky News Australia, which may actually be even worse than Fox News, which is saying a lot. So, here's an old, uh, one-year-old thing, which had 2 million views from this abomination called Sky News Australia, which is also owned by Rupert Murdoch. Like, Rupert Murdoch is literally, like, single-handedly responsible for, for, like, all sorts of atrocities in the world, right? This, this man is, is an absolute monster. Wanted to foist it on us, no matter how inconvenient it was. We heard a lot about that film. I just typed its title into the ABC search engine and got a couple of pages of results. Let me oh, tell wait, you about another film, Planet of the Humans. I typed that into the is ABC search engine and came yeah. up blank. This is a documentary that absolutely skewers the renewable energy industry which is kind of strange because this is a film of the far green left. Directed by Jeff Gibbs, its executive producer is Michael Moore, the millionaire leftist, Academy Award-winning director of Bowling for Columbine, Fahrenheit 9-11 and Trumpland. However, in this film, the argument is that renewable energy <sighs> is not clean, not green and not practical. Have a look at this segment exposing a General Motors promotion of electric cars. Because everybody thought we killed the electric vehicle. No, we didn't. It's alive and well. So what's charging the, the batteries right now? What, where, where, what's the source of a... Well, electricity? here. It's, it's oh, great. So basically you're saying that electric cars don't work because we're running... Uh, because electricity is produced by fossil fuels. And then you're going to... And so that's like your whole argument. And of course you're subsidizing fossil fuels, but you completely conveniently ignore to uh, mention that they actually... Like, we could just have electricity produced by uh, renewable energy instead, and that would work a lot better. But no, oh, yeah, electricity comes from... Look, th that's a tired old argument that was old already in 2010. It's coming from the building. I mean, uh, is it... Um, what's our mix of power? Oh, actually, Lansing feeds the building. What's that? Lansing feeds power to the building. So I don't I don't know... They're, uh... I bet you they're a bit of coal. Oh, they're heavy on natural gas, aren't they? Look, yeah, uh, uh, who cares? Who cares? That's not the point. The point is that you need to get your electricity grid uh, served by renewable uh, uh, renewable energy. Like, this makes no sense. And yeah, I know there's this issue that you have to, uh, you, <laughs> you have to store the energy because otherwise, like, uh, you know, it's not going to be available at certain times. But if you combine solar and wind, that already helps a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, things, I mean, at this point, the, these renewables without taking into account the storage are already like the cheapest at this point. Uh, and like, that's, and it's dropping so fast that you can imagine that pretty soon, even with storage, even with, uh, with storage is going to be cheaper, uh, which means that it should be viable, maybe not quite yet, but pretty soon. In any case, I mean, it's, it's just going to happen spontaneously, but like, Normally, it should happen spontaneously, as long as you at least stop subsidizing coal. Yeah, right now, the car is charging off of your grid. Right. It would be charging off uh, our grid, this is which so is 90, about 95% coal. How long do you think it will be? In fact, it's best for the planet. We now run Apple on 100% renewable energy. All of our facilities worldwide. And they did chop down a forest to put up solar panels near their North Carolina plant but they didn't disconnect from the grid, and they can't. Duke says energy-hungry companies like Apple can never go entirely off the grid. They're still hooked up to our grid. Uh, okay, so how about you um, set up a grid that's based on renewable energies again? Despite all of the claims, I haven't found a single entity anywhere in the world that's running on 100% solar and wind alone. No, because you can't, wow, again. this is the sort possible. of hypocrisy and reality that we on the centre-right... Oh, wow, well, that's a sort of hypocrisy and reality. The yeah, hard yeah. Lift. The film Piece even of argues shit. that the mining of rare metals, intensive energy use to make steel... You should be happy about the mining of rare metals, right? You should be happy, because it's like lots of them come from Australia, don't they? wind you turbines, moron. land clearing for solar farms, and the need to dispose... Yeah, except that you don't have to clear the land for solar farms. 
dispose of them and replace this infrastructure within a decade or two is not, well, it's not environmentally friendly. Well, actually, you know, there are coal-powered plants that actually have to be replaced, and so instead of replacing them, you could simply, you could simply uh, put some renewable energies in instead, right? So after all the mining, the fossil fuels, the toxins, the environmental destruction, here's what happens next. Only a few years after it was built, things at Ivanpah began to fall apart. Broken mirrors littered the desert. Okay, so it's like... Yes, these giant solar and wind place? technology installations may last only a few decades. Then tear it down and start all over again. Yeah, we can reuse the materials. If there's enough planet left. If there's enough planet left. If yes, enough... it is catastrophist. This is full-on climate alarmism. That's the part the green left media will love. The Guardian, the nine newspapers and the ABC will nod. Oh, unlike your alarmism about a few BLM protesters that will suddenly destroy all of civilization, neo-feminist, uh, neo-Marxist, uh, third-wave integrational, intersectional feminist with Jewish spaceships that will completely... Okay, but no, yeah, you're, you're, it's the left that are alarmists. Their sure. heads at this stuff... It's what they've been saying for years. But this film exposes their incurious backing for renewable energy. On the centre right, we've always said that renewables are nice if they work, but they're expensive, unreliable, impractical, and frankly, a bit of a con. Now the left are onto this. For instance, exposing the absolute nonsense of so-called biomass green energy, essentially just burning trees. Yeah, except that, like, what you're supposed to do is, like, burn the waste, you know? You're not, like, supposed to tear down, like, forests that were in place. It's more like, yeah, obviously, if you're just gonna, like, chop down the Amazon to fuel your biomass, that, that sucks. What you need is, like, when there's, when there's biological waste, you can use that to turn into fuel, okay? Like manure was used to fertilize fields. Got everything here. So you have the number one polluter in the state that people think emits magical fairy dust from the smokestack. The reality is what you have is a facility that burns 400,000 green tons a year of trees. Now, this facility burns 30 cords of wood per hour. That's a hell of a lot of wood. And on top of that, it actually burns natural gas as well. And to think you would have to have 10 of these to replace one average coal-fired power plant. <laughs> You know, it's just not going to work. It's just nuts. It takes a great deal of fossil fuels to cut down all of these trees, to truck yeah. them in, to use the big machinery to dump the wood chips everywhere. So the idea that somehow yeah. this is not anything to do with fossil fuels just doesn't even make any sense. It's, yeah. It couldn't happen without fossil fuels, in fact. But we, we agree on, on that. Renewable energy, because you can grow more trees. Apart from all this, Planet of the Humans exposes how big money, major corporations and wealthy investors Profit from all of this, soaking up government subsidies and profiting from green posturing. Bloomberg sponsored a UN climate session to discuss wrapping up biomass and biofuels around the world. Billionaires were in love with the idea of turning what was left of nature into green profits. Remember when Al Gore had gotten Richard Branson to invest billions into saving the planet? Richard Branson, founder of Virgin Atlantic, powered a Boeing 747 from London to Amsterdam on a coconut oil mixture to mm -hmm. highlight the potential of this amazing oil as a clean energy biofuel. Branson had actually invested in biofuels. He was attempting to replace the jet fuel damaging the planet with biofuels that required the consumption of the living planet. It's hard to believe we're seeing this from the left, isn't it? But why haven't you heard much about it? Why isn't the ABC talking about this, showing this film, debating it? They usually love Mike Moore's films. They usually love to promote the political films of the green left. This one goes too far for them, of course. It attacks renewables and people that most climate alarmists regard as secular saints, like Al Gore. On one side, we have gold bars. Mmm, mmm. <laughs> 
Mmm, don't they look good? I'd just like to have some of those gold bars. Uh, on the other side of the scales, um, the entire planet. <laughs> if we do the right thing, then we're going to create a lot of wealth. And when it came time for Al Gore to choose between the entire planet and getting him some of them gold bars, what choice did he make? Here is Al Gore earning his keep by pretending to care about the rainforest while lobbying Congress on behalf of the sugarcane ethanol industry. Any comment on the Brazilian effort here with the issue of the possibility of expanding into that Amazon River Basin with further deforestation to produce more ethanol out of sugarcane is a worry. And I, apparently you're not as concerned about that. No, no, I, I am. I simply forgot. <laughs> Look, to be fair, there are a few things this film forgets too, such as the fact it's a good thing when natural gas-fired electricity replaces coal. This cuts emissions by at least half and allows better integration with renewable energy. The film also conveniently forgets that nuclear energy is the emissions-free silver bullet that could sustain much of the planet with baseload power. The film argues the only solution to all of this is to reduce our population. But it also forgets that as countries become developed, prosperous and educated, thanks in large part to reliable and cheap energy, they tend to slow or stop their population growth. But to yeah. bring this back to the domestic media... That's true, but overall... The... I mean, he, he, to be honest, he makes some good points, and it's true that uh, for now, renewables aren't quite aren't quite there yet, okay? And um, so, like, it, sure, I, I think I think in any case, when renewables are, are like, ready, they will, they will just take over automatically. Um, but... Obviously, I mean, one thing you have to do is just stop subsidizing fossil fuels, at least, okay? Just stop doing that. Because, um, in fact, the majority of subsidies are still going to fossil fuels. So, maybe, maybe, you know, you claim that you like big government, like you don't like big government. Um, so, how about you actually show that by not subsidizing fossil fuels? Um, beyond that, um, some valid points. Some valid points. Obviously, we don't want to, like, chop down the Amazon for biofuels. Uh, obviously, uh, yeah, uh, lots of people are, like, in energy poverty. They need more energy, and fossil fuels could bring that. And also, lots of, um, what was that last thing? Nuclear. Nuclear, in a way, it produces lots of this nasty waste, but it's true that it doesn't produce carbon dioxide, and it's a very reliable, steady source of energy. So that's something to think about. I'm not, I, I actually don't really know what, what's, the, what's the best at this point. 